Hey YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look what we have here. It's a 50 millimeter Avanti S from HobbyZone.com, care of arrows. Look at that beautiful 11 bladed fan. And we've got, we're cutting right to the chase. 1500 milliamp hour, 4S guys. They call out 3S, I disagree. Full auto leveling on, throttle cuts off. There you go. Out of the auto leveling. It's helpful, but you don't need it. Here we go. That's why you need 4S, guys. I'm gonna just tell you right now, if you guys have flown any more jets than just this one, don't waste your time with anything less than 4S. That's the roll rate, guys. One of the complications of this plane, albeit a good plane, is that you're dealing with no rudder. And to do crisp maneuvering with a bank and yank is something that only God can do. In other words, I don't control mother nature and if it's a dead calm day, you're still not gonna be able to do as crisp a maneuver as you want. And that's one thing about this Avanti that screams, I need a rudder. And if you have 4S, you can at least get that thing moving. And once it's moving, it's pretty controllable, guys. Let me just say it right now. This is a cool plane, you'll like it, but it's not gonna fly like the regular Avanti until you have airspeed. And you want a rudder. This does not come with it. It's a bank and yank. Split elevator, one singular elevator inside the fuse. No landing gear. You can't even pull them off, which is okay, to be honest, it keeps it light. But that's the whole roll rate, guys. I'm talking 100%. Love the screen, and she gets her. At 4S, you're pushing the flight envelope to try to hold those angles. Slowly getting back into the power, about 60, 70% there. Janking it. You guys see the little slip there at the end? That's what I'm talking about. This thing should be able to do that turn with ease. But because you don't have a rudder, you only have access to so many options. Now, if you're a brand new pilot, this is about full speed on 3S. We do have videos for you. We're gonna share it. Just stay tuned with us. We've got a couple of brighter daytime footage that's coming next. But what we're gonna do, or maybe this one's gonna precede that, I'm not sure which direction it's gonna go. But one thing I can tell you, I wanna be able to roll this thing faster. I wanna be able to keep it tight. I don't like having to time everything quite so much. Now, can you do it? Sure. You can, but do I wanna to have to work so hard to fly this thing? No. And truth is, if you're a beginner, it's, you're gonna find it hard to do this, especially if you're trying to fly it on 3S 1300, which is what they recommend. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a lot lighter on that battery than this 1500. That's a stall flipping upside down, not me flipping upside down intentionally just to let you know. So guys, if you're brand new to the hobby, this is probably not gonna be the plane for you. As you can see, it's taking a lot of concentration and skill to keep it in these tight circuits and move it fast. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if you wanna move it fast, you're gonna enjoy this plane. Also, I gotta say the L39, also by Arrows, care of hobbyzone.com follow our links you can buy one for your very own very impressive 
Very similar flight characteristics, but I'm gonna tell you this. We have flown this one in the wind this weekend. The heavy wind was almost not worth sharing because it was so lame. I'm telling you, you need a lot of control to put up with wind, folks. And the vector, which is basically our flight controller, flight stabilizer out of the throttle now, just doing a nice glide by. We'll do an outside and then going back inside. Throttle hard, full, full throttle there. Out of the throttle again. That's our five minutes. Now, you can fly this a little bit past, and that's what I'm gonna do. But camera crew to the end of the driveway, I am going to be walking so that we can land. You're doing a good job. It's gonna be nice, crispy, and relaxed. Wind's coming from our back. Kind of tempted to do it on the, on the driveway just to show the people how it works. Pull it up. I kind of dug the nose in there. This grass is thick right now. So that was probably one of my best flights with this plane so far. That's our fifth flight, okay? Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you a few things about this plane. I said it while it was in action. Good hand launch holes, okay? Good servo protection, good. Easy to access motor mount. We had to do a little bit of work here to get this one not to pop off. We'll show that in our unbox build radio setup. There's the motor. Now you can see nothing's on fire yet. We are flying that all on 4S. Skid plate, hard nose, skid plate, skid plate, skid plate, skid plate. My suggestion is try to bring it in and drag the tail and it'll just suck itself into the grass. That man aircraft is close, guys. Yeah, he is. He's probably like 2,500 feet away from us right now. Why is he so you. low? I don't know. So anyway, all I'm gonna say is the Avanti looks great. Yes, I did just hit my face, that was hilarious. This thing looks good. And as you can see, even in this beautiful, serene fall evening in central Iowa, 2023, I think the plane looks the part, but you didn't see how hard it was to fly that. If this thing had a rudder, I could do that all day long. I could probably do it in heavy winds. Well, maybe not heavy winds, but light winds. And I could get that thing tucked twice as tight, twice as crisp on half the energy, meaning half the skill, half the sticks, um, half the timing, and I could do it faster. The Avanti screams speed and performance. Mm -hmm. The rudder limits your performance a lot. Those are my thoughts, I'm sticking to it. Now, RC Hacker sells these pair of batteries for a good price, they're not even smart packs. We flew it on 1300 3S and we had reasonably good experience, but it's not the same because you don't get the speed. You're not gonna get the ups. You're lucky to get this thing to flop over at the top of the hill, okay? 4S puts it over the top. These are 100C packs, okay? You would think I was pushing it to death. I'm really not, okay? Nothing crazy, nothing to write home about. I'm not really sure why they don't just upgrade the ESC to a little bit bigger, but truth is, the 30 amp ESC that's on here is doing just fine. So whatever they're doing, it's working. Here's my biggest conclusion that you're not gonna like to hear if you're after the Savant S. My suggestion is, if you like this thing and you really like it, the only reason I'm gonna suggest this over the L39 is if you have 10 bucks in your pocket, because that's what it's gonna take. 10 bucks, maybe 13 bucks, because you buy a servo extension cable and you've got a rudder in this thing and it will outperform any of the 50 millimeter EDFs from Arrows. Thinking of canopy, space, thinking of build quality, think of insanely simple build. You did have to glue the tail on, mm -hmm. but I think you had to glue the tail on most of them. Four screws to hold the wing on, very simple to get together. I mean, it was probably a 10 minute build except I screwed around trying to fix this thing. Yep. Um, only because I had to pull that off. If I would have just left, it would have been fine. 10 minute build. Okay, radio setup is a breeze with a four channel transmitter or receiver combo here. Mm -hmm. 
in this case, don't forget, I do have my rudder. I do have my rudder set to work in tandem with my ailerons just because I want some simulation of roll authority so I can do hand launching here. We'll show you exactly how we did it. If you want to see it, it's in the Unbox Build Radio setup that published like a minute before we published this video, okay? My suggestion at the end of the day, conclusion suggestion, if you want to add some flaps, you're pissing in the wind. You don't need it. This thing has a pretty wide flight envelope. It will cruise along very slow, which is all it's going to do on 3S. So I would not suggest flaps, although if you go from a 4 channel to a six channel oh and yes there is a yellow wire not thrust reverse we did test it in our unbox build radio setup and it might just be shut off but either way it did not work as we're used to with the predator escs that we've seen in the past on the fms product line okay so that might just be a programming lead so raw truth conclusion that we owe our amazing audience right here on Brian Phillips RC. There's a lot of good 50 millimeter EDF fish in the sea. This would not be the fish I would catch unless I plan to put a rudder on it. That's truth. Now, again, a lot of highly subjective remarks at the end there. The thing does what you expect from a 50 millimeter EDF, but it does more than you should expect if you plop in a 1500 milliamp 100C 4S. Not to mention you got the right end, you got an XT60, you're gonna have an XT60 on here. Now, yes, can you use the 13 3S, 1300 3S? Sure you can. Are you gonna enjoy the experience? You're gonna be very um, on the edge of regret, okay? That's the truth. Yeah. So, now that you have the full truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God, from Brian Phillips RC, which means there's some subjectivity. And yes, that is, that is totally built into the context of, I have flown the 70, which is double the price, two times the price of this thing. And that's just the plane. Yeah. Then put the more expensive receiver and then put the more expensive battery and you'll be right the exact price that you should be spending for the experience you want to have. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? What I'm saying is, do it if you want that experience. If you don't want to spend that much money, all you have to do is spend half of it and add a rudder. And you'll have probably a similar experience to a 6S and no less a 6S that performs as good as many 80 millimeter EDFs that we've seen in 6S. And that's not just slather it on thick, that's true from Brian Phillips RC. Yes, pessimistic to a certain extent because this is a very good plane. But unfortunately, when you have lots of beautiful little children, you have lots to compare to. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a brand new pilot, you've never flown an EDF, this one's going to be a little bit tough for you, I bet. That's the God's honest truth. Unless because you're going to want it, you're going to want it to fly like I just flew it and you're not. Right. You're going to crash it. Yeah. This thing's going to be resilient, it's going to be robust, it's going to handle the crash okay. But it's just not going to be the same as what you want. And what you want is the Avanti S that's like gold and yellow and it's kind of a goofy blue. color. Yeah, blue. Blue and red. Yeah, so that's, that's the 70 from FMS. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, it's double the price as this. It's also a little bit bigger. It's not that much bigger. It's a third bigger. You're going to get a 70 millimeter EDF that's one of the most thrusty 70s that we've ever played with. And I'll tell you what, that one bites hard when it stalls. And you're gonna have the added benefit of a more expensive receiver, because instead of four channel, you're going up to six channel with programmable stuff. But if you've already got the NX-10, and you've already got another 6S pack, you're not in it that much deeper, guys. And you get the full experience. Now, again, like I said, one rudder, probably $10 worth of parts. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm using real 2023 numbers. You can buy an economy nine gram servo. You can take it out of a crash plane or you can go spend 20 bucks and you can have a servo extension or you can get one with a long cable. You can go back to that very vector. If you rip this thing out, which I'm gonna be the sacrifice, sacrificial lamb here, you don't even need to rip it out. Look, there's your plug for your, there's your rudder. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
stick your rudder in the hole. I could lose my mode button and do everything I want on a four channel. Still. And that includes the rudder, guys. Because yeah. we've already got the rudder plug where it matters and that is on the flight controller, folks. Now, I'm not 100% sure it's integrated and turned on, but it really doesn't matter because you're not gonna need that on a stabilizer anyway. Just having the human interaction is gonna make a huge, huge, huge difference in the performance. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, so Brian, just spend 20 bucks and put that on and show us how awesome it is. No. You wanna know why? Because there's gonna be others that are gonna do something just like that so that they can convince you that this is the end-all cure-all that it's really not. Because that's what we do here. Brian Phillips RC takes a beautiful plane and we point out its beautiful qualities and we look at the gorgeousness and we look at how well it slips through the air and screams and how the penetration was on the wings when we try to put the screws in. Mm -hmm. Or if the rod fit the hole or if the nose broke off when you accidentally threw it in the breeze or if it's got a better paint job than you expected. How big is it? What type of skill level do you expect? We don't do fastest, bestest, cheapest. That's a bunch of BS malarkey. Waste of your time, waste of mine. At the end of the day, we bring you the full truth, nothing but the truth, so help us God. And then you guys can make a better life for yourself, a better RC life with better RC children. And we wanna show it to you how it comes out of the box, how you're gonna get yours. Yes. Not what you have to do if you spend your whole weekend upgrading every single part. We'll stand I know where you're standing over there. I don't You're know. You're looking at it. Because we're seeing beautiful trees. So guys, at the end of the day, and this is no BS from Brian Phillips RC, check out brianphillipsrc.com. You can check out the pure comparisons of all those 50s, meaning all the 50 millimeter EDF ducted, beautiful products that we've flown all on 4S and 3S for videos for you. That's from Arrows, care of hobbyzone.com. You can check the links. If you go there and then you like it and you buy it, you cut us out of the entire equation. That means that we make nothing for our efforts. And then I cry a little bit inside. <laughs> and our children do without one corn dog. We have four of them. We need lots of corn dogs, folks. We do. But seriously though, that's the way you need to think about it if you have a soul and you breathe oxygen. <laughs> so, so I'm milking it today. But seriously, when you go to the when you go to hobbyzone.com and you don't follow our link, then you basically cut us out of the equation. If we helped steer you in the direction of hobbyzone.com, we would love the privilege, the pleasure and honor for you to write our link right on over there. All you have to do is follow the links in the video description below. Then they know, we know that you know that they know that you followed our link and then they're gonna have to send us a check. Oh yeah! And if you don't like this plane and you like when people tell you the truth and they're looking out for your bottom line and not arrows and not hobbyzone.com and not China, China, not them. You don't, you know, like when Google is worried about all us creators that do all the work for them and they just like have a server somewhere, some dinky billion dollar server you know, in 20 places across the globe that house all these perfectly managed servers, you know? Do they and, have like one just for us? Yeah, when they're like, yeah, we need some more money because we're broke. <laughs> they're not broke. They literally follow your every heartbeat and yet they're trying to squeeze us like the little mice that we are. Oh, go ahead, mice. Eat this. Oh, no, no, that's ours. <laughs> they just eat a mouse. That was us. <laughs> So if you wanna send them your special thanks, the best thing you can do is check out the links in the video description below, okay? That's how you, that's how you thank them, thank us, and thank Eros for a good job. Because really, honestly, at the end of the day, this is a cool plane, it's fun. I just feel like, yeah, put a rudder on the thing already, it would've been so much easier for me to say, awesome, do it right now, gorgeous, perfect. Like all the other guys are gonna do anyway. Okay. Now you know the full story and you can act upon that story. And by the way, guys, if you don't want to follow the links in the video description, you want to take that corn dog right out of my daughter's mouth. <laughs> no, corn no corn dog for you. Uh, then what you can do is you can just uh, not follow the links. And that's the thing. Like if you go there and you buy it and you have this like strong remorse 
then the next time you go, you can buy through the links or you can go to PayPal. Just remember, we're friends and family. Even though you stole the corn dog, you jerk. Then we also have uh, Patreon, which is our monthly support option. It does give you a little bit of access to my brain through comments. And we'd have a little bit of a dialogue there. Although it's not added as a value added thing, we would have to charge tax to the international payers, which is ridiculous, but true. And that's why we don't talk about it on Patreon. It just magically sort of happens, but it's not a value that we actually list, okay? Then we have super thanks and members. Super thanks one time gifts on YouTube. Thanks for super thanks. You'll be taking that ripped out hot dog and giving it back to the daughter or whoever else wants it. Maybe it was one of my sons or it was me. It was my third one. I'm pretty hungry because as you can see, I'm not on a diet right now maybe later but anyway don't snicker at that the last thing would be youtube membership yes. so they can get their cut so yep. if you want to give them a high five like high five thanks google good job you deserve the money that we're going to give to these poor starving children you can take it here you go or just buy the planes and then everybody wins arrows win we win you win because this thing shows up at your front door ready to have a rudder installed. But honestly, you know, it's a good plane. I think you're going to like it. It's not the best thing since sliced bread. You're going to be disappointed if you expect it to be an Avanti S. And it's not. It's a 50 millimeter hand launch sort of thing that looks like an Avanti S and it's slow and sluggish. Put a 4S, it makes it better. Put a rudder and it finishes the job. So go get her done. Follow the link in the video description below. We will find a couple servos and throw them in there just for your viewing pleasure. I think they're probably gonna go for in the 20s, but it'll be like maybe a couple two pack. Like, I don't know, Emacs servos, Metal Gear. That's what yeah, I go for if I'm buying servos. Um, Cause I, you know, if I'm gonna go through the trouble to put it in there, I'm gonna make it good. Yeah. All right, that's all you get guys. More flights coming, stay tuned. Don't forget to buy from the link. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look at this brand new Avanti S 50 millimeter EDF from Arrows. So cool. Can't wait to fly it. We're just cutting right to the chase. Full disclosure, RC Hacker 1500 4S. Oops, supposed to run on something more like this. And we will show that at the end, but just so you know, We've done it every other time and had good luck. Throttle cuts off. This does have a vector for auto leveling if you need it. And I'm gonna launch in auto leveling. So throttle cuts off, here we go. Oh yes, awesome. Okay, out of the auto leveling. That's about 40, 50% throttle there. A little hard, a little hard on the throttle there, getting it moving. So if you've ever flown a Avanti, it's a very crispy, fast jet. That's full up elevator to keep that level upside down, rather full down elevator, I should say. Almost full, probably 60, 70% elevator there. So this plane is gonna definitely, it's gonna do the things you want it to do, but it's definitely not gonna be a full size Avanti that you're used to because when you get a 50 millimeter, sometimes they like to cheap out and not use rudders. And I'm like, really? Come on, guys. So without a rudder, that means you're not gonna be able to do the crisp turns like you're used to. You can still definitely get the job done with the bank and yank configuration. As you know, this thing is just bank and yank. So you have a split elevator, singular elevator servo that's up at front. Balances out nice. You can see I kind of have my trim so that the plane sort of flies uphill a little bit that's to help recover from turns because as you can imagine with no rudder you can't control where the nose is in your turn you see what i'm talking about so you got to carry so much speed and that's one thing i noticed about this plane immediately now as you can see i'm doing some pretty tight figure eights here and it's getting the job done on four ads but the thing is, as soon as you go to 3S, you're gonna find it quite burdensome to keep this plane flying the way you want it to. 
Now, that being said, I wanna just talk about the looks. Beautiful plane, absolutely fantastic to see in the air. And also, don't need flaps. This thing has a relatively thick wing. So it's definitely designed to have slower performance than its bigger brothers and sisters. Obviously, the 70 that we recently did, which has been out for a long time actually, is a great flying plane. I think it's a V3 or four or five or six or seven, but it's really good. So five minutes of flight time should get you down to where you've got enough for a few go arounds and a little bit of shenanigans without losing your plane but definitely can tell you a few things. I am gonna trim just forward just a hair, see if we can get this thing flying a little flatter. I like the colors better on this one than I did on the 70 we did recently. But the thing is, I like the flight performance on that quite a bit better, and it should be. It's noteworthy going to be a more expensive plane. Let's do down the runway. You guys see the slight porpoise? That would be due to wind. I noticed the vector is very light on stabilization on this plane, but the auto leveling is pretty good. That's auto leveling. And as you can see, it's gone uphill quite a bit. I'm gonna bring it back down to planet Earth. Now we're with the wind here. So as you can see, as I come out of the controls, it likes to pull up just a little bit. So in the auto leveling, it's not letting me bank all the way over. As you can see, it's limited on bank angles. That's all the way over, now all the way down, now all the way up. It sort of maybe lets you go all the way vertical, okay? So now out of the vector, there's no stabilizer on, now let's see how it looks. And this is one of the reasons why this plane has got me sort of weirded out, because as you can see, it looks like the vector is still on and it flies a lot like it. But it's just sort of like having that in your back pocket, having that friend that's helping to steer you in the right path because I'm I just don't feel like it's doing much of anything it's very strange that I would say that too because I'm a big proponent of stabilizers I use them in almost every plane that I have obviously a little bit of turbulence over those trees but look at the turbulence there now it's really kicking around so now I'm going to turn on the vector okay now it's on again I put that on switch D our radio setup will it's gonna be available right before this video released. So if you guys wanna follow along in order, that's fine. Our timer is about to elapse for our five minutes. That's pretty much a full speed. I just wanna tell you guys this, if you get this plane, the 30 amp ESC will eventually probably give out on somebody if you push it hard enough on 4S. But I'm gonna tell you this too, we've never had one of these arrows, planes, give us any problems on 4S. And that's because we must be right on the hair of what we can get away with in terms of amp draw. And I don't know how that can be possible, or maybe they've underrated their 30 amp ESCs in these planes. That being said, I just want you guys to understand you will be risking your biscuit by going 4S. But I'm just gonna tell you this, even on 4S, this plane screams, where is my rudder, sir? So when you buy it, just keep in mind, it is an inexpensive option, but it's gonna be a lot more expensive if you decide to add a rudder. And the truth is, it really could use it. There's a lot of planes that do a lot of cool things, and this plane is no different than that. 117 over R5 gives us six minutes and 17 seconds. We're just gonna pop the battery and switch right in. Camera crew's gonna come over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what this thing does on 3S because I'm gonna tell you, my biggest issue with this plane is the absent rudder. I normally do care about that on these planes, but then I fly them and I'm like, whatever, they do okay without. This plane gets around okay, no doubt. By the way, that's our placement there. Our 1300 goes up here. Now we had two flights yesterday, super duper windy, 
just did not, just didn't film well uh, because it was a little bit too sunny. But today it's a little bit calmer and the blue skies are pretty terrible too. So I'm just concerned we're gonna have trouble with this footage today. Now that being said guys, that doesn't necessarily change the performance of the plane for you. So if you end up wanting to buy one of these and you think, hey, it checks all the boxes I have, well then, oh, and by the way, that is not thrust reverse. That does not work. We did try it in our unbox build radio setup. And so just before you get super excited and say, well, why didn't you use thrust reverse? Because A, when would I have needed it in that entire flight? And that's with the bigger pack, guys, the 4S. Now on 3S, it's gonna be even less critical, okay? Now this plane is admittedly lighter. I'm just gonna lay it right back down. Don't accidentally hand launch before it dances, folks. There's our dance, okay? So now that the plane is danced, that means that the vector is active and we have controls. Double check your surfaces before you launch, okay? Basically, this plane will trick you into thinking it's ready to go. I didn't do it yet, but I could see somebody doing it. It's slow, yeah. All right, so throttle cuts off. I'm gonna launch out of auto leveling. 100% throttle, there you go. Now, we've got some wind helping me as you can see. But look at that, guys. I told you she likes 4S. That's 60, 70% with the wind. Now watch, watch into the wind. That's 50, looks like it's doing okay. Okay, and by the way, that was full roll rate. Sorry, that was because I was trying to show them just how slow it really is. Can you get back to the middle? Right there. That's 100% throttle. You just don't have what you need to fly this plane effect effectively. You have to fly it like you're flying a slope soaring, you know, plane, which I just got an amazing idea. If this plane did have a rudder, you could slope soar this thing something fantastic because it's just a, got the perfect shape for that. That's 30% throttle. With the wind, you're okay. Watch the transition. Okay, that was just kind of, see the problem is when you don't have a rudder, getting your vector exactly where you want it constitutes a bank and a yank. And then you have to unbank and unyank to get going straight. So if you need a three or four degree turn, good luck with that, folks. It just doesn't really happen. And so what you end up doing is you end up sort of just being like, okay, that was good enough. Okay, that was good enough. And for me as a pilot, it's just not my style of flying. I, I like being in control of where that plane ends up. And yes, we have a decent sized space here, but it's still relatively tight compared to some of your flight fields. Up and over. But you can see it's, it's, it can carry speed, folks. I just want you guys to know something. When we make a suggestion about an airplane, we want it to be an amazing experience. I'm not gonna say this isn't gonna be a good experience because I think it will be a good experience for the vast majority of people that want something like this. Is it gonna be a first jet? I would never suggest this one as a first jet. You could do it as a first or second jet if you have lots of other plane experience, but I'm just gonna tell you, a lot of the skills that will help make this plane not difficult for you can be easier satisfied with other offerings from Arrows that are very good. Now, the Avanti S, speaking of the airframe and just my limited experience in the 70, okay? The 70 millimeter is super fun to fly, very robust, very fast, acts like an 80, okay? Now that is an FMS offering, full disclosure, but I'm just gonna tell you this right now. If you get it, you're gonna be overwhelmed with how good it is. Granted, it's a 6S platform. This one here is only flying on 3S right now. So yes, it should be more sophisticated in the fact that you've got a lot more control surfaces working and the cost is considerably higher, okay? But I just want you guys to understand where I really lay at the end of the day on this project. I think it's a great looking hand launch. I don't even wanna call it a backyard flyer because you kinda need the space to fly it. Now, are you gonna land in a Vaunty S on a grass strip 
that, that's in the 70s? The answer is no. But you can land this one. Look at the ops. Just loathsomely bad compared to in the 4S. You know, you're up there doing an uncontrolled stall turn to make it over the top. I'm gonna say this right now, guys. At Brian Phillips RC, we are here for the audience, not for the merchant. One minute remaining. Yes, you can get over a five minute flight time. You'll be fine. You could probably squeeze seven minutes if you're not crazy on the power. But that there is about 60 to 70% throttle. And it's enough, it's sufficient. But I'm gonna tell you something interesting and you'll probably agree after having watched two flights now. A rudder would allow this plane to better tolerate the lower power level of a 3S. And I know that sounds ridiculous. That's full throttle now. We probably are getting to the point where we're losing juice. Okay, just gonna keep my altitude. A little efficiency flying here. Okay, here we go. We're gonna get in over the trees, back off the throttle, get our burst back that we need in case we have any problems. Bring it in kind of fast. Stolen it just above the grass and then throttle cut. So that was just under, that was seven minutes short of five minutes. Okay. Seven minutes short of or five seven, minutes. Or seven seconds short of okay. five minutes. Thank you. Yep. So the Avanti S in the 50 millimeter is a, is a good sort of like taste of what the Avanti can do, but it's not the same. You need inboard flaps to make an Avanti have a wide flight envelope. Otherwise it goes like this, boom, like a brick, okay? Because it's got really short wings, high wing loading, and it's fast. When it's not fast, it doesn't do what you expect it would do. And so it's kind of hard to fly. And so what I want is I want the camera crew up here, and I'm gonna talk about this for a minute. That plane, if you end up getting one, you'll like it a lot, okay? I'm just gonna tell you right now, don't even bother flying it on 3S. It's a waste of your time. Just go straight on flight number one to 4S. Show me the battery. 1500 milliamp hour, 100C, 4S. These little hacker packs come for a pair of two. We got links to them. We will link to them. We'll link to the 3S if you want to stay in spec on the ESC. We understand some of you guys are going to be nervous about it because you're going to plow through pack after pack after pack after pack after pack. Where's our manned aircraft? Oh, dude, he's right there. Yep. So that being said, we just want you guys to understand at the end of the day, when we promote these products, we're promoting them in the object, uh, or excuse me, in the object of helping you get the most out of your RC budget. That doesn't mean that just because there is a better, more expensive offering, which is like, duh, it doesn't mean that this cheaper, less good option is not good. So what I'm gonna tell you right now is that I definitely have my concerns about the Avanti S in the 50. Is it a good plane? Absolutely, it is a good plane. Does it need a rudder? I would really like to see a rudder in it because I think it would help with all the aspects that I don't like about this plane. A, the slow, anemic roll rate. You're barely able to roll it over. This is supposed to be a fast aerobatic. You know, you can't, I mean, you could do a four point roll on this thing if you wanted to because the thing it doesn't go fast enough. You're gonna lose yourself. And then the other thing is without a rudder, you can't hold that knife edge. So in terms of controllability, we have a four channel receiver. It's just a three channel plane, guys. The four channels used for mode, okay? And then I mixed in a little bit here onto the ailerons, which means I mixed out the rudder on the stick. You'll see that in the Unbox Build radio setup. Don't ask here. Go watch the video. I can't explain it in text. It will take me three hours. Just watch that part. It's very easy to do, but you have to set up a couple of mixes. You have to undo the, the rudder, and then you have to add in aileron mix. I'll show you exactly how to do it in the NX. If you have some other brand, you might have to adapt a little bit. And that's one point I wanna talk about. You don't need a 10 channel radio system to do this, but if you're flying the types of planes that you're gonna be flying, if you're getting that thing, this is where I think most people are gonna to wanna to end up. I think some people have some disagreements with me on this. Obviously, it's largely subjective. Of course, we have the new cow offering, if you're into that sort of thing. I like steak myself. Uh, but that being said, the NX-10 is still where it's at for me. Now, there are gonna be some offerings that are cheaper. There's gonna be some different offerings. But on this plane, 
you can fly with any brand of receiver because your stabilizer is built into the vector. However, I gotta say, this is one of the few times where I felt like the vector was not effective enough. You wanna know why? Because the ailerons are too small for this particular plane. That aileron is the same size as it is proportional to the wing as the 70, which flies like a hundred and something miles an hour. That thing doesn't go a hundred and something miles an hour unless you have it taped to the front of your airplane. A big airplane, okay? So I'm gonna tell you a few things about this plane. If you get it, you have to do, trust me. If you get it, 4S, A, no doubt. That'll take this plane from lame to something, okay? Two, you may need to consider getting one nine gram servo, finding a pocket, doing a linkage, and keeping that weight up at the center. Or you can do a smaller five gram servo and you could easily control a rudder. Make the rudder relatively big, use it to help speed up your rolls. Use it to help you fly this thing like you want to. Don't worry about inboard flaps. Flaps are not necessary on this plane. Three, if you wanna change the anemic roll rate, you can go to the inside hole. We're still in the outside hole as prescribed by the manual because it was all set up, okay? Relatively easy build, by the way. A little bit of glue is needed for the tail. And we had a problem with one of the magnets on the hatch axis to the EDF fan. No big deal, it's probably just the way I pulled it off or they got them a little bit glued together. We fixed it, it was like a 10 minute thing, not a big deal. But at the end of the day, I don't wanna get a plane that I have to immediately modify to make it fly like it's a big sister or brother. However, this is not the 70. We have to keep that in mind when we're doing our comparisons. So Brian Phillips RC has flown the other one. He's also flown a lot better jets and he's flown a lot worse jets. So for what this plane is, how does it stack up in the 50s? I would say it's somewhere in this range out of the box. On 3S, it's down here. Why? Because it's big, okay? That being said, if you get yourself the BAE Hawk, or if you get yourself the Viper, or if you get yourself the T38, or was it T33, T33. rather? Uh, if you get yourself the L39 was yep. wonderful. I really like that plane. Again, rudder would have been nice, but this thing, it needs it. The L39, it's like, it, you know, I could do with it. It'd be helpful. So those are my conclusions on the Hobby Zone offering of this Avanti S from Eros, okay? So at the end of the day, we wanna give you good advice, but we also don't wanna talk you out of a good plane just because there is a bigger, more expensive, better one. And I think that's what I fear is happening here is that some people are gonna think you don't like it. No, I like it for what it is. It's just that I love the L39. I thought it was an awesome plane. This one, it does the job. But truth is, 70 millimeter Viper compared to 70 millimeter Avanti, I feel like the Avanti is way more like high performance than the Viper. So I know kind of a, you know, that's gonna get some pushback I'm sure from people, but it is an opinion, okay? Now that being said, how can you help us now that we have helped you make some good decisions? Hopefully that information will get you in a spot where you can make a great decision. You can buy this plane from the links in the video description below. That's the number one way to help support us. I think it's a great plane. Buy the batteries, buy the receiver, buy the transmitter. Those are all linked to you right there. Now, if you don't wanna do that, if this plane isn't for you, go to brianphillipsrc.com. You can search by type or by brand, whoever sent it to us, and then whoever, uh, whatever type it is. So it's really easy to find what you need, and then you can find a competitive offering that you like better, or you can go up to the next step up that's gonna be a more inclusive experience for you. Now, if that doesn't meet your fancy, that's gonna take you back to a video and you start the process again. If you just don't wanna do that, you're like, hey, I don't have cash to buy one right now, but thanks for showing me, I could check that off the list or I could add it to my list, then what we have is super thanks on YouTube, monthly support through YouTube members, thanks members, monthly support through PayPal, which also gets you access sort of to communication with us, but it's not listed. Through Patreon. Through Patreon. And then support, one-time support through PayPal. Mm -hmm. Okay, just remember friends and family. Guys, that wraps it up for us. This plane, this plane is one of these planes that I love to hate, and yet I still am very glad that we had an opportunity to review it for you because it's got the features that you expect, but it just, it, I feel like it's so close to greatness. And really cutting in a rudder is not that big a deal. It would take like, probably that'd be a, you know, a half an hour to an hour project for somebody that's not filming a video, okay? 
Admittedly, there's enough thickness on this that you can hide a nine gram servo, but I would probably opt for a smaller one, like a five gram servo, or, you know, put something big up here and then just make another linkage that goes through in a pass through similar to what they did. So guys, really good plane. I just feel like it's so close to greatness. I can't not say it. And I hope you guys won't beat me up for it. But the truth is we're here for you on Brian Phillips RC. We want the best for you and we appreciate you. We also appreciate Hobby Zone. We appreciate these good planes that Arrows puts out. But I'm gonna tell you something. At the end of the day, you're the reason we have this channel. You're the reason that they give a crap about what we think. You're the reason that we tell you the full truth. Nothing but the truth. So help us God, because that's really what you need from an RC review and not just somebody patting the pocketbooks of whoever makes whatever plane we happen to be holding, okay? So that being said, good plane. I'm not gonna give it like some scathing review. I don't think it's bad. I just feel like there's so much more from it, guys. And I hope you get it because it's gonna be fun. But if you get it, do the work, you'll enjoy it. I promise. Stay tuned. So much more coming from Brian Phillips RC.